Okay, I apologize. I was getting ahead of myself. I said we were going to do the focuser board next, not Ashley. We're going to focus on the bottom ring of the UTA, and I need to mark the location of the connector points that I'm going to use in order to connect that UTA to the truss. So depending on what type of system you're going to use, um, typically whenever you're using the eight tube truss, there's going to be at least four connection points. Um, our truss, of course, is all one piece. It's a collapsible truss system. So each, of two, each set of tubes goes up and connects to a single point that connects to the UTA. So I'm going to need four connection points. So just like the strut shapes that we made, or just like the strut locations that we identified by transferring from square to wood, I'm gonna do that and transfer spots for these little connectors that I ultimately mount on the UTAs. So I've got four of these. I just wanted to kind of show you those for no reason. So I'm gonna set those down and we're gonna do the same thing Now, ideally, we're, we're going to want this location to be right in the middle of those struts, or at least that's where I like it to be. And that's going to come into play here shortly whenever we add a spot for the focuser board, because that focuser board can very quickly get in the way of either a strut or a connection point if you're not careful. And I like to route a channel for the focuser board rather than just drilling it to the upper cage. I think that looks kind of tacky. I like to take one extra step and route a channel and put the focuser board in the channel. So you do have to be kind of wary of where you're putting your connection points in respect to your focuser board. Um, so I want to grab a protractor. Here we go. Nothing fancy. This is, uh, I think, 50 cents or a dollar if things are still 50 cents. Um, so I'm going to use this protractor and pick which of my rings that I want to be the bottom ring. It might sound kind of corny that you would actually put any thought into that, but think about it this way. The bottom ring is going to be the one that you look at more. It's going to be the one you touch more. And specifically, the top of the bottom ring is going to be the one you both look at and touch more. So I would pick, you know, we're only talking an inch and a half material made in a circle. But still, you know, you might be able to identify a kind of cool grain. So I'm going to go with the one on this side, and that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to take my compass, or my, I'm sorry, it's not a compass, it's a protractor. I'm going to take my protractor, and I am going to identify 45 degrees from, or in between my, two of my struts. That's going to be my initial mark. And then I will do the same procedure that I did whenever I initially made my strut locations. I'm going to line up the square with the little mark I made for 45 degrees in the center. Go with my pencil, make sure I'm there. I'm going to make one solid line all the way down. Now we'll follow that same procedure and make our other two lines. One, let's extend that on up. There we go. Now we have eight marks on the bottom ring of our UTA. And so another thing that I would recommend you do is identify which are struts and which are connection points because what's bound to happen is you use a Forstner bit and you cut a big hole for one of your connection points and you go, oh no, I've got to redo the whole ring. So I'm going to write S for all my struts. And then I'll do a small C for connection points. It's probably unnecessary, but I'd rather do too much than too little. And now, now we're going to focus on the location for the hole I'm going to drill. So I can insert my little 3 8 uh, T-nut 
into the bottom ring of the UTA for my connection point. Now, this is important because like I said, I like to route a channel for the focuser board and depending on the size of telescope, whether you want that focuser ultimately to be directly standing beside you, in other words, at a 90 degree angle whenever you're on the side of the telescope, so whenever it's pointed down horizontally, that focuser is always at a 90 degree angle to the ground, or do you like it at a 45 degree, degree angle, kind of pointing up, which is kind of handy with like 12 and a half inch F5. Um, depending on how tall you are, you might even be able to get away with it with like a 16 inch F4.5. But what I have found is that unless you're over six foot one, six foot two, which I am not, um, whenever you put it at that angle, if a scope is tall, say anything from, I don't know, if, if the focuser is 66 inches plus from the ground, whenever you point it just horizontal or vertical, that focuser starts getting really uncomfortable to try to look through. You're standing on your toes and it's uncomfortable. So on a 16 inch F4.5, I like to make the focuser directly at a 90 degree angle to the ground whenever going down horizontally. So I'm going to actually have that focuser, the focuser board be right in the middle of one of these connection points. So you gotta be wary, mindful of where you're putting that hole for this connection point. So instead of going right in the middle, I'm actually gonna go a little bit closer to the edge of the UTA. And then the focuser, of course, is going to put, be put a little bit further back. Now, this is another reason that I've chosen to go with an 18-inch inside diameter because that focuser board is pretty much going to be as close to the inside of the ring as possible, which obviously brings the focuser as close to the inside of the ring as possible. And then depending on how long your draw tube is, you'll want to take that into account as well. But I use a standard 1.75 inch draw tube, so 18-inch inside diameter is perfect for these 16-inchers. So that's what I'm going to do next is measure the locations for my holes that I will end up drilling for my connection points. And rather than actually measure, I'll point out that anytime you can actually use the uh, piece you're going to use rather than a tape, you're always going to get a more accurate location. So I'm just going to take that piece. And go right in the center of it. So, now I will take my square and see that that is just about perfectly half an inch. So half an inch on the outside line is where all my connection points are going to be. So I'm going to mark those locations real quick. Okay, so those locations are marked. <clears throat> now we're going to do our focuser board and our finder board. So I'll start with my first focuser board mark on the bottom ring. And the way I like to do that, let's back up a little bit, is you need to identify what thickness of material you're going to use for your focuser board. A lot of people will try to use quarter inch material. I think that's a little bit too thin. We're only talking about a piece that's, you know, gonna be 12 to 16 inches long, so it's not gonna be heavy as it is. It's about four and a half, four inches wide. So, uh, so you wanna think about all that before you make your initial marking. But I like to use half inch or uh, 12 millimeter thick plywood for my focuser board. So we'll do that next. Okay, so regarding the marking of the connection points and the struts, here I'll take you a little bit closer and show you. The C, as you can see, is for connection point. And then of course the S is for strut. And as we zoom out, that's what it's going to look like after it's been all marked up. And here's a closer look at the actual connectors that I like to use. They're called brad hole T-nuts. I like to use 3 8 16. 
because I can buy them in bulk and they're extremely rigid once you connect them with a few wood screws. So any marking, the four markings for C, are going to receive one of these on the bottom of the UTA. And so let's go back to this focuser board.